Hi there, I'm coming in a bit early today as I want to just check that you can see me. I think so, I hope so. So just bear with us, just bear with me while everybody joins. We are a bit early, but I just like to, as I'm doing this uh, without the aid of a camera person, I just want to check that everything's working okay. I think that's a bit high. Oh gosh, it is, yes. That would have been better if I'd have checked that first, wouldn't it? Let's see what's happening. Okay, just a minute or so to go. see there's something wrong here this isn't right this is not right okay just bear with me this is not right okay can you see me okay now something went wrong there I don't know quite what happened there Hi there, this is Cheryl Lampard. Ah, that's better. I really don't know what happened there. I'm so sorry. If you joined me early so I could sort out all the problems, you can see that I didn't actually manage to do that very easily. Anyway, if you could just tell me that you can hear me okay, that would be wonderful. Sorry, I've got a laptop to my left so I can see what you're seeing, but I have to refresh the screen. And it's taken a while here. Okay. Can you can you hear me okay? If somebody could just let me know that, that would be wonderful. Anyway, welcome to my studio. Uh, welcome to Knitter Matters, season two, episode three. And whether you're a regular viewer or new to Knitter Matters, whether you're watching live or the replay later, I'm very grateful for you taking the time to join me. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm Cheryl Lampard, I'm an image consultant, my company is Style Matters International and throughout my life I've had two passions which are sewing and knitting. I also used to be the owner of a yarn store in Brighton, England and um, one of the great joys of owning a yarn store apart from the fact that you um, are surrounded by gorgeous yarn is that you, you have the great joy of teaching people how to knit. So it's, it's really a great pleasure all these decades later, and it, it is decades later, to be able to teach you to knit and help you with your knitting topics via this platform. Now, if you've been watching recently, you'll know that I'm on my own in terms of no one oper operating the camera as, as normal as I've done in the past. But I, I do have a laptop. Oh, somebody said they can hear me. Thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate that. So if you've been watching recently, you know I'm on my own, but I have a laptop to my left so I can see what you're seeing, but there's quite a few seconds delay before what I see via the iPad camera appears on the live feed. Now last week, I thought I'd resolve the issue of sometimes being out of the viewing area. When I'm knitting, I know that sometimes my hands have gone off the top of the screen. Oh, Helen, you're attending. First time, hi from South Carolina. Hi to you too. Wonderful, thank you for joining us. So I thought I'd resolve the issue of my hands going off the screen and I carefully draped my the viewing area with red dressmaker's draping tape. And I thought that was such a good idea. But unfortunately, as I was knitting, the yarn tended, lifted up the red tape and I ended up with it stuck to the yarn, stuck to the needles and stuck to myself. Well, I suppose that serves me right for trying to be clever. Anyway, until my camera operator is back or, or I have an overhead camera, and that is in, on the planning list, um, I'll just have to do my best to keep the knitting within the viewing area. Now, I will ask your for forbearance when I move the camera. It does take a little while to adjust, as you can see. And I promise not to overrun this week. I'll keep it short and sweet today. 
So I am going to move the camera now. Just bear with me. It takes a, a moment or so to do, and I've got to get it in exactly the right place so that you can see my hands. So just look away now if this sort of thing makes you dizzy, because that's not what I want. Okay, I have my little chalk cross this week to see if I can, if that makes a difference. Make sure I can stay in range. Okay. That's my mouse just for the laptop. Oh, I can see my cross appearing, so that's good. See, this is my this is my terribly technical marking point today. <laughs> anyway, as I said, I will try and say hello as, as you pop up. Um, but forgive me if I can't do that, um, if I miss doing so. I can only see a certain amount while I'm doing the live. But I do welcome your feedback and please, please comment or ask questions in the thread below. If I can't answer them while we're going along, I'll respond and reply as soon as possible afterwards. Now, this week, it's all about elongated stitches. I'm going to put that there so that you can really see. Elongated stitches. Well, in season one, episode 22, I demonstrated dropped stitch patterns. Now, this is called a sea foam pattern. And this is very much a, a, a dropped stitch. It's also an, an elongated stitch, but it, it varies. Um, it's done with yarn overs and then on the return row, you drop them. But obviously to get this sort of wider area here, there's more yarn overs and wraps around the needle than there are either side. Um, it, it's effective, but really quite simple. and and. You want to use drop stitches or elongated stitches um, when you want to create interesting texture. And really, in, in essence, what you're doing is deliberately stretching out stitches to do that. Now, the idea of stretching stitches to most knitters is horrific because that's not what we want to do. But when you're doing something like this, that's exactly what you want to do. And as I said, with elongated stitches, you're you're using wraps or yarn overs, but you're not unraveling down the length of the knitting. And that's really the difference between dropped stitches and elongated stitches. You're not, you're dropping them, but you're not unraveling. Um, in, in true sort of drop stitch techniques, you're, you're dropping stitches and go right to the bottom of the knitting or you create deliberate ladders. So, and, and we're not going to do that. Let me get started with a really simple one to do and I'll show you how to do this so this one uh, can you see that okay or should I bring back the maybe I'll bring back the, that you might be able to see that a bit better so I am I was just finishing this today and I haven't blocked it out so this is a really simple way of getting um, an elongated stitch this would be great in a cotton sweater a summer sweater you can easily work these bands you see here right, elongated stitches you can easily work these bands into an existing knitting pattern as it doesn't alter the stitch count so, some of these elongated stitch patterns do that this one doesn't so you could replace stripes in a pattern you could um, just add them in if it's a pattern with a just a stocking stitch gauge you could easily substitute some areas for this and you could change the color if you wanted to it really works well, this type of thing, in variegated yarns. You know, those, those with the colours that vary throughout, they work really well um, in this stitch pattern. So, let me show you how this is done. I did show this one before in the drop stitch session last year, but it's worth doing again because it's such a good little technique. So, what you want to do here, it's a good idea to have some sort of foundation row here and what I've done with just my stockinette either side of my elongated stitch I have or stitches I have done a row of if you will reverse stocking stitch although essentially all I've done is a knit row from the the purl side and it just gives you a, a firmer base on which to extend those stitches and also it makes it more defined it keeps the pattern much more defined so I've worked my stocking stitch and I've worked one row from the reverse, from the wrong side in knit. So you see those knit bumps just along that edge there. So now I am going to 
do the row where I elongate the stitches. And what I'm going to do is wrap the needle, sorry, wrap the yarn around the needle twice. I'm knitting the stitch and I'm wrapping it. Knitting the stitch, wrapping it. Knitting the stitch, wrapping it. Knitting the stitch, wrapping it, and so on. And I will do this to the end of the row because if I try and turn around halfway through, I won't be able to show you the effects of when you've done it. But it really doesn't take too much time to do and it's effective. So we'll just keep going. I really ought to learn to make these sample swatches a few <laughs> stitches less or fewer stitches. Um, that way you won't have to just sit and watch me knitting along the row. But it is what it is and now I've managed to poke the needle up my sleeve. Oh dear. <laughs> Right, nearly there. So each of these stitches, I'm literally, it's as if I'm doing a knit stitch, I'm just doing another wrap round the right hand needle. That's all I'm doing. Get my yarn. Oops, okay, right. And I am doing it on the end stitches as well, because if I don't, it's gonna kind of pull up at the sides and I don't want that. Now, I'm ready to do a wrong side row and up until this point in my bands of stockinette stitch, obviously this would be a purl row, but because I want that nice, ridgy, bumpy edge, the other side of my elongated stitches, I'm going to do knit stitches. So I'm literally going to knit and drop that stitch. I'm gonna knit, drop that, or drop that yarn over, I should say, not the stitch. You're not dropping the stitch. So because this is double wrapped, Knit, drop the yarn over. That's all I'm doing. Drop the yarn over, take it off the needle, all to the end of the row. There we go. Knit, drop, knit one, drop one, the famous knitters, the beginner knitters mantra. Knit one, drop one. Well, this time you can knit one, drop one, as long as you're dropping the yarn over. That's just fine. Okay. I put my yarn, my ball of yarn at the back of the worktop area so it doesn't get in the way, but I have to really give it a, a yank when I <laughs> when I need to some more yarn. Right, okay, we're on that last stitch. Now what you do, really all you need to do is give that a bit of a pull. Just get that to where you want it to be. Obviously when you block it, it'll be much better, but that's all there is to that. Really interesting little technique and so simple. As I said, you could just replace that with stripes in a pattern or just add them in. It's not gonna alter the gauge. You're gonna get a longer, uh, it, um, um, uh, uh, obviously this takes up more space than three or four rows, uh, just the, the sorry, than the three rows it's taken to create that pattern, but that means you'll knit your sweater a bit quicker. So that's always a good thing. Okay, so that's that one. The next one that I want to show you is this, because I think this is really very cool and very clever. And again, it's pretty simple, and we do a slightly different technique for this. Let me just get it in position for you. So with this one, what we have is stripes. That's all they are, stripes. But you can see I've pulled up a stitch at every point. Now, yes, I've worked out that my stitches, I want them in a sort of um, strategic and uh, worked out format. But you could do this with sort of three. You probably, you want to have an odd number of stitches really for this one. I think I've got seven altogether. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, because I want to be able to get my third one as it were. So I've got five stitches between the two elongated stitches. So I want my third one to be where I pull up the stitch. So, but you could do it with uh, um, less stitches. You could do it with a fewer number. You could do it with three, you could do it with five. You could even do it with more than that. But anyway, I've, I've got five 
between my elongated stitches so it's a sort of seven stitch repeat almost well six I suppose anyway you can choose how you want that to do but so simple and very very effective let me show you what we do here so it's a slightly different technique because we're not actually dropping a stitch here we're actually pulling one up excuse me I've got a very croaky throat today and I'm just going to take a sip of water that's another reason why we're I won't overrun today my throat is my voice is giving out and there's some of you I know that were saying thank goodness stop her talking okay so what we're going to do I've done my row of pink I'm going to oops careful not to drop pull it off the end Cheryl I have sorry let me just get that stitch back on and I just pull one off the edge there so I'm going to change now to my white yarn and what I'm going to do is I am going to knit, knit. Now this is the next stitch I want to pull up my stitch. Let me untangle some of this yarn so it's not going to be all over the place. Right, this, so my next stitch, I want to go down two stitches two rows below. You can choose where you want it. If you want it really dramatic um, and a, a very obvious, you can go further than that, but obviously your stripes will have to be deeper. For this purpose, I'm going down two, so not that one. I'm going into this one. I'm going to knit. I'm going to pull up my yarn, and then I'm going to knit this one with the stitch there. Now, you might find that easier to just put that on that right-hand needle and then knit them both like that knit and I'm not knitting into the back of the stitch it, I know that looked like it but I wasn't doing that I'm just placing it on the needle so that I can get to where I want to be knit to my next where am I this is my next one so one two this is where I want to be so I'm just checking in the laptop that you can still see my hands I think you can right I knit and I pull it up and then you see you, you the other way you could do this is knit that one and then just flip that over the top either way you're knitting both the stitches together you don't want to knit them separately you're going to get extra stitches which you don't want let me carry on this is a really fun technique you can do it with lots of different color stripes as well but i do it's i do really like this one there we go down again to the next row down and now I need to knit those both together what's gone wrong there okay I'll do that again I did something silly there okay here we go right all I'm doing there is kind of positioning it so I can knit them both together one two three four five last one on this row one two knit it pull it through again there's an if you want to just knit that one and then whip that one over the top that's fine too but you can see already how that elongated stitch looks i'm going to do the purl row oh i have got another one to do here oh that's okay i thought i'd done them all yes okay one two Okay, there we go. Now the row on the coming back is just a pearl row. And you can see quite clearly on the wrong side how those little dips appear. I am going to quickly pearl across because I want you to see how that works out. I do tend to, I don't make this tight, but I don't want those elongated stitches to be kind of too standy outy. So I tend to do that when I get to that stitch, I tend to sort of pull the yarn a little bit tighter. Standy out, I don't know if that's a word. It is now, I've decided. Okay, so when I get to this one, I'm just going to make that quite snug. I'm, I don't want that to be too gappy. 
And if when you turn it back round, you find it's a little looser than you would like, you can just kind of manipulate the stitches along. I'll tell you, I'll show you how to do that. It's very simple. You want a nice, just with the point of your needle, you can do that. So, and actually, again, blocking helps with that. So, yeah, that one's a little bit loopier than I might like. But, you know, to be honest, I'm probably not going to worry about that too much until I've blocked it. Because it's amazing how things work themselves out and settle themselves down once it's blocked. But if you did want to just kind of tighten that up, all you have to do is get a nice pointy needle tip and just kind of work that along a bit. But as I say, blocking has a wonderful way of sorting all that out. So that's how to do this stripy elongated stitch technique. Very effective and very easy to do. So if you get bored with doing stripes, you can do that one. Now the last uh, one that I want to show you today, as far as elongated stitches are concerned, is this. This is a loop stitch. Loop stitches Certainly, it's an elongated stitch pattern. It's sometimes called fur stitch. Um, it's often used in children's toys to create fur or hair, the effect of that anyway. Um, you can use it in garments, especially to trim calves, collars, things like that. It's, it's, you can do it... I've done these loops every other stitch, every stitch, because I wanted it to be quite dense. And you generally do it on the knit row, which is what I've done. You can do it on knit and purl rows, but it, the, the loops are going to stay the side that you do them. Um, if you don't want it as, as dense or if you're using two strands of yarn together, you could do it every other stitch. So for our purposes, we're doing it on the right side row. And then the wrong side is just you purl back. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. I have got a smaller sample here because this one takes a little bit longer, but I do want to show you this technique. So I take my, I knit my first stitch, but I leave it on the needle. Right, let me just move something out of the way here. I knit my first stitch. I'm leaving it on the needle. Okay. What I'm doing now is bringing the yarn forward. I'm looping it around my thumb. Oh, I'm bringing it back. Now, and you can make a, the loop any size you want. You can extend it out. You could make it much smaller than that if you want to. But loop it around your thumb. Then you knit the stitch. Now what you need to do is take the first stitch and pass it over the second one. Otherwise, you're going to end up with twice as many stitches. Let me show you again. So you, you knit the stitch, but you leave it on the left hand needle. You bring the yarn forward. You wrap it around your thumb. Then you take it to the back. Now you knit the stitch. Then you pass that first one over the second one. And that kind of locks the loop in. Let me pull some more yarn up. Let me... So knit, leave it on the needle, bring the yarn through, wrap it round your thumb, knit it, bring the first stitch over. Knit, leave it on the needle, bring that yarn from the back to the front, wrap it round your thumb, knit the stitch, over. And we'll do that for the whole row because I want to show you on the row back. Sorry if I appear to be going sideways here as I move and my needle wants to disappear up my sleeve cuff again for some reason. Okay. Knitting on a table isn't like knitting on your lap, is it? I don't know if you find that. It's <laughs> the position is quite different. So 
don't realise that until you're doing it. And so you can give those a tug and pull them out. But you can see they're held now because of we're passing that stitch over. So it holds those nice and firmly. There's other ways to do this, but I think this is kind of the easiest. You can do it on wrong side rows as well. It's just done slightly differently, but we'll just stick to the right side rows for this. Okay, nearly there. Oh. It's that my right hand nearly wants to keep pulling off the table. That's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. There we go. Nearly there. I did make this a smaller sample, but I see that it's <laughs> probably could have done with being smaller still. Oh well. Last few stitches. What's happening is, as I, my, the back of my, I just realised, the back of my needle is kind of hitting the table, so it's kind of knocking me off, off balance a bit. It's taken me all this time to work that out. Oh well. Two more to go. And then I'll do the pearl row. And you could just do simply a few rows of this. You can even, if you want to, do this right at the bottom of um, your knitting and cut the end so it's a fringe rather than loops. As long as they're secure, it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Now, that row here will just be a pearl row. And I like to do this fairly snugly. I don't want this loose because it does tend to elongate itself anyway. So I don't want it even longer than it wants to be. It's always quicker on the, <laughs> the road back, isn't it? It's like doing a car journey the first time. It seems forever. And then on the second time you do it, it seems to go in a flash. Okay, so there we go. There's your loops, and you can you can adjust them if you want them. You can pull them up a bit. You can even them out a bit if you want to. Well, it's sort of stretching it, but that's how you do a basic loop stitch. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I've gone off the viewing point. Let me just move back so you can see. I just realised I went off my chalk mark. I need to be have one of those. I need to have like a dog, little collar that zaps myself when I go, like a electric fence around my <laughs> my viewing area that zaps my hands if I wander off. Anyway, that's our loopy stitch. That's a, That's how to do that loopy stitch. Okay, so that's how to do some e different elongated stitches. Oh, good eve. And we're on time tonight. That's wonderful. I'm so, so don't forget, don't forget that our friends at Mary Maxim offer a 20% discount. If you use the promo code Cheryl, uh, go to their website, marymaxim.com. It's 20% off one item, but it'll be the highest priced item in your cart, but you must use the promo code Cheryl to get that 20% discount. Okay. Right, I am going to reposition the camera again to finish off, so look away if this sort of thing makes you queasy. I'll try and do a better job of it this time. Okay. Okay, hopefully I'll be interviewing you. A moment I've just got to check in the in the laptop it'll take a moment can you see me I think so okay <laughs> well I hope you enjoyed that and as always this episode and all other episodes of Knitter Matters are uploaded to our Facebook page and the Knitter Matters YouTube channel afterwards. So you can watch the replays as many times as you want to. If you're searching for this one, 
Uh, remember, we're now on season two, so this is season two, episode three. So I want to thank you again very much for watching me. Don't hesitate to ask any questions in the thread below and I will answer them during the week. The, the Knitter Matters page is for knitters. It's for there to ask any questions. It's my pleasure to help you with your knitting. So stay well, stay safe, stay calm and stay knitting. And I'll see you again next Tuesday at 7pm Eastern. Bye for now.